Welcome to the League of Ireland preview on independent.ie. I'm Aidan O'Hara, back after losing a place to a younger colleague early in the season, and I'm joined by Daniel McDonald to look ahead to tonight's games. And speaking of value experience, Dan, Chase and Pack have really blown their chance to take advantage of Shamrock Rovers slip ups. The game against Shelbourne for Rovers might represent the last big hurdle, do you think, to prevent them from winning four in a row? Yeah, Joe, I've been thinking about that. I, I've been saying that. And then the flip side is they've dropped points to like the, the whole reason they're probably the, the title race is open is because they've dropped seven points to draw down five points to Cork. Um, and their their points per game against the top teams is very good. And actually the game's coming up that you naturally look at them on paper and say they'll beat them, they'll beat them, they'll beat them. But they're the ones that have killed them all season. So like maybe not. Um, but I do feel like there is something about this game that is is key. They haven't beaten Shells this season. Um, the you know Shells are getting better, and they have a good profile for the type of team that can cause Rovers a few problems just in the way they play. They can sort of break quickly and and um, albeit they're vulnerable enough in set pieces, which which mm. Rovers might fancy. Um, exploit it and have done in the past um, but yeah it does just feel at this stage like you know Rovers opened the door last week and no one no one actually went through it um, so if they approach a game like this a tough game on paper and win it in any way it doesn't matter how they win it if they succeed in winning it um, it does feel like a long way back for everyone else It's kind of been the theme of the season Rovers have been leaving the door open but nobody's walked through it once they like, I mean shells for, for next season, they could be one of the teams to challenge. I know there's been interesting stuff off the pitch, as there often is with Damien Duff, but Duff and Bradley before the game have been kind of almost talking up the budgets of the opposition's team, strangely enough. It's almost sounded like, almost like GA managers almost trying to trying to big up the opposition. Like it was some interesting quotes ahead of the game. Pretty much so, yeah. Um a sort of an interesting build up, all right. And um you know, a couple of us spoke to Damien Duff earlier in the week about this game um, and very respectful towards Rovers because he was a member of Stephen Bradley's staff, which people might forget. And he was there very under the radar at the time, but he would be on the dugout, you know, in, in the sidelines. He was around Rovers um, to varying degrees. Um, and and yeah, he did like he, he was talking sort of wistfully about it. And then but the instant, the instant it was suggested, well, maybe Rovers had issues then because they had a small budget because he was there before they started mm-hmm. winning stuff. He straight away clicked into manager mode of no, 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 no. They had a very big budget then. So there's a good friendship between these two and, you know, good relationship, but there's a rivalry underneath it as well. And uh, and then Stephen Bradley yesterday speculating that Charles might have the biggest budget in the league next year. Now, Stephen Bradley might be more playing a little bit of a game with his own, or maybe not playing a game, but sending a message to his own club that, um, you know, other clubs are coming here. And I suppose it's the story that's, you know, people might be reading this morning is, is Stephen Bradley now suggesting that talks around the budget and his own position are going to be delayed till the end of the season, where a fortnight ago he was suggesting there was a board meeting that hopefully will get things moving on. Now it's all left a little bit, uh, opened for interpretation and um, what was being said between the lines of comments. So, um, and, and the other angle to it is that, I mean, Stephen Bradley and Damien Duff probably at some stage in the future might want to manage Ireland, like they'll have ambitions to probably to get there. Of course. Um, if Stephen Bradley left Shamrock Rovers, which is possible, would they look to someone like Damien Duff? They probably would. His contract is, is actually up. Um, Stephen Bradley's situation is unclear so there's a lot going on around these mm-hmm. two camps now it may end up by the way in February Stephen Bradley's managing Rovers and Damien Duff is managing Shelburne right but there is just things up in the air at the moment which add another layer to the actual importance that's around this game too mm-hmm. and Shez I know I know. Um, Duff talked about the, the ambition they have not to be you know not to just finish in fourth or whatever they do seem to be an, an up and coming team who have you know, not necessarily overachieved, but certainly certainly achieved a lot this season. Two teams that are probably frustrated though, the two teams behind Rovers, Derry and Pats. I mean, Derry play UCD at home, Pats going down to Cork against the new manager. They obviously have to win to 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 um try and keep whatever pressure they have on Rovers. Do you see two wins or how do you see it going? It's very, very difficult to stay to know. 
I think they will beat UCD. Unfortunately, it's one where, well, here you go. Like, you'll get the momentum going now. But the game they really needed to win was last Friday. I mean, and the Friday before when they played Rovers. I think UCD at home probably is a game they will win. Um, so, Pats, yeah, I know I've probably been a bit critical of them recently. Um, I just haven't been particularly impressed by them uh, in, the, in the games that I've watched them. You know, just uh, watched them play Shells last month and I, I thought Shells were, were better. Um, but it may well be the Pats have just had a little bit of a blip within the season and like maybe they just need something to focus the minds and a bad defeat on Monday, two red cards. So that means Mulraney and Sam Curtis are out um, of this trip, the, the Cup semi-final next week in Cork again, which is weird. And as you mentioned, there's a new manager slash old manager, Richie Holland is back to the forefront of their sort of caretaker team in Cork and, and they're, they were horrendous on Monday. You know, you expect a reaction from them. Mm. Um I think for Pats, so you just need one from them too. I just, I just think their general form has just been a little bit underwhelming. Um, and I think for them, to be honest, I do think a top three result for them would be terrific from this stage. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really see them as a, as potential league winners, but um, they just have to be a little bit careful over their shoulders. They're probably hoping that Shells, in a way, like they're obviously mm-hmm. looking for Rovers to drop points in the title context, but Shells are, are the one team that's unbeaten in the league since June that could maybe do them in the top three. So, I know the Pats' perspective in this game on the Barber Shells game. Maybe I'd love to hear them privately what they're saying about it. Yeah, yeah, it's a three point gap, I think, between, between Pats and Shells. Obviously, if Shells drop points, that helps Bowes potentially with the fourth. They, they play Sligo looking for a win, obviously. And then behind Bowes, Dundalk, who are hosting draw, it's a potential a bit of a perfect storm game for Dundalk to be facing into it. Draw it in a bit of form, local rivalry. You know, Stevie O'Donnell's still probably under a bit of pressure. It's 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 not probably the ideal game that Dundalk want to be want to have. No, I mean Drogheda are probably liberated now. I mean they're basically safe. Great win, um, you know, on on Monday against Pats, and okay, you wonder at some stage is their application just going to drop off because they're in that sort of they're not chasing anything, and there's always a danger that teams reach that point, um, but they don't, you know, they all have their own motivations and ambitions. So mm-hmm. uh, I think the Dock were quite good on Monday against Cork, but it's hard to know what they beat, and they were good in the first half last week and conceded bad goals. So um, yeah, that's a tough one for the Dock, and I think that equation you mentioned Bowes may as well deal you know, the Bowes and mm-hmm. Sligo Rovers game that I think Bowes actually. In some ways, like they're in a difficult spot in terms of that top three finish. They do have the cup that the others, that Dundalk and Shells don't have yeah. in the back pocket as an option. And um, but their run in is actually kind enough if they can win this game. Um, I think this is a big game for Bowes. That if they do this, they 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 have a chance of of still sneaking into third spot. Albeit, I can't see them doing it without winning this fixture. So, um, Sligo Rovers are probably okay now with Cork's situation. Um, mm-hmm. probably just on the verge of being okay. Um, and Bowes need to start games better, which has been a bit of an issue for them recently. Yeah, so plenty of talking points for the evening. Dan, that's great. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll speak to you again soon. No worries, uh, Aidan. Thank you very much.